Hi, everyone. I'm Roxana Saberi. The White House says it had nothing to do with the contract or the process related to restoring Puerto Rico's electrical grid. A huge contract was awarded to a tiny company in Whitefish, Montana. Whitefish also happens to be the hometown of Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke. On Friday, Zinke released a statement denying he had anything to do with the contract. David Begno has been following the recovery efforts in Puerto Rico. He went to Montana to find out more. Nestled down this long driveway in Whitefish, Montana, is a one-story wooden house, which is the home of Whitefish Energy. The tiny energy company with only two full-time employees surprised many. There's mail for Andy Tekmensky. When it received a $300 million no-bid contract to help rebuild Puerto Rico's electrical grid, Whitefish has never worked on a project of this size. I mean, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's beautiful out here, but certainly doesn't look like a headquarters for an energy company. Hi, I'm Andy Tekmansky. Whitefish CEO Andy Tekmansky says his company, which is located in the hometown of Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke, has 300 workers on the ground in Puerto Rico working to fix a crippled electrical system. And it's going to help get the power back on in Puerto Rico faster. A month after Hurricane Maria devastated Puerto Rico, 75% of that island is still without power. The controversy over the no-bid contract set off a Twitter feud between the mayor of San Juan, Carmen Yulín Cruz, and the company. Cruz believes the deal with Whitefish Energy should be voided. She described the company as, quote, inadequate and asked for transparency. Whitefish hit back, threatening to leave, writing, quote, we've got 44 linemen rebuilding power lines in your city and 40 more men just arrived. Do you want us to send them back or keep working? The company later apologized. Whitefish has put out a statement saying that they will cooperate with any request that comes from Congress, FEMA, or any other government organization that wants to know more about their contract. And they're asking people to hold off instead of having what they call misinformed conclusions. They also said they're proud of the work they're doing in Puerto Rico. Roxana. David, can you explain a little more about what happened? Someone tried to block your car as you were leaving? Well, so that was interesting. We, the residence where we were is probably, I'd say, 200 yards from here as the crow flies. And as we were leaving, the UPS man was right behind us. We were coming down this road, and there was a man who literally pulled up in front of us and blocked us. Uh, we got out, had a conversation with the man, and he said, I have the sheriff's department coming to talk to you. So we stayed here on the road, and the sheriff's deputy showed up, and come to find out, he gave the man a bit of a lecture, telling, pe telling him you can't just block folks like, like this on the road. But the bottom line is it appears that he is in some way connected to the CEO who lives at that house and it appears to be a family member and he was worried there apparently were kids and some other relatives inside the house they did not open the door and as we went up to the residence we knocked we asked the UPS man if we were in the right place he said yes when no one came to the door we left but it was a bit of a bizarre encounter as we tried to get out of here yeah and that residence being the place that you said didn't look like a headquarters for an energy company right no, no, not at all. Um, Whitefish's CEO said it has 300 workers on the ground in Puerto Rico. David, you spent weeks on right. the island in the wake of Hurricane Maria. Does that seem like enough workers to rebuild the power grid? Maybe enough if you've got one, two or three years to do it. Hmm. Look, from my reporting on the ground, 300 workers is not going to get the job done in terms of meeting the goal that the governor of Puerto Rico has set. He set December as being the goal to have everyone uh, on the island having power. But FEMA has said it could be a year from now before everyone has power. Look, the bottom line is this, and it cannot be overstated. Nearly four weeks after that hurricane, you have only 24% power generation on that island. Only 24%. And most of the power is being generated to hospitals and essential entities like a hospital. Nearly 90% of the people on that island don't have power. It's 87 degrees. But where that island is in the Caribbean, it feels like 95. And most people don't have water. So uh, when, when you hear about this Puerto Rico story, remember, um, most of the times after natural disasters, things get better pretty quickly. It's the same as it was the day after the hurricane. Mm. It's the same for people today. I talked to a man yesterday who put a tent in his yard, and he's got his wife, newborn baby, and another child sleeping in that tent because they have no power inside. The bugs were inside, and it was just brutal. 
So they're sleeping on a tent in the backyard now. That's just one story. But back to your question about the power, 300 people, it's not going to get the job done. Not going to get the job done in a timely manner. And the people of Puerto Rico are still saying, why can't you get this done faster? Time is of the essence. David Bagno, thank you. Bingo. You bet.